Here I am at Earth Cruiser in Bend, Oregon, picking up my brand new 2020 Mitsubishi Fuso with a custom four-wheel drive conversion by Earth Cruiser called the Core Chassis with Dana 80 axles, front and rear, or really Dynatrack 80 axles, front and rear, 37 inch by 13 and a half inch Toyo Mud Train tires that can each support about 4,300 pounds, really that large size for the payload capacity. And overall, really payload capacity in this vehicle of over 8,000 pounds. There's the pass-through that I also bought, the fiberglass pass-through that I'm going to install. I have a video coming up on that. Um, there also upgraded 60-gallon fuel tank and, of course, the Hero two-speed transfer case as well as some other nice goodies. And the subframe, I had them custom build. I'm going to go into more. Um, that's going to support the Expedition camper body that I'm going to be installing here very soon on this truck chassis, which is why I bought it so I can build out my new Expedition camper that is going to go onto this truck chassis, really set up for both domestic and global long-term travel. So here I am with Clive at Earth Cruiser getting a little walkthrough of this new vehicle. You can see the pass-through there mounted to the frame. Here is the LS 6 liter V8 and using it for taking it on its first drive. And in this video here, I am going to share with you not just my pickup of my new Mitsubishi Fuso with the four-wheel drive custom conversion, but also my driving experience, my first driving experience driving at home over a seven-hour drive, and also some of the upgrades and changes that need to happen with it. And while I was at Earth Cruiser, I took a look at their fiberglass pass-through frame because I bought one and I'm going to install that on this brand new vehicle by cutting a big hole in the back of the vehicle before I install the Expedition Camper, which is coming up very soon. And unfortunately, I noticed some problems before I even left Ben, including the check engine light coming on. Two, check engine light. Two is the regular shifting here, or up shifting that happens too quickly and easily. Three, the steering adjustment. Four is the not shift on the fly. Okay, here we are in this absolutely beautiful valley. Take a look at this gorgeous view right now. Just stupendous. Beautiful light, fall colors on the grass, nice clouds. Just a big, beautiful scene out this big, beautiful window. No hood or anything covering us in the front here. Just a big open space. So let's talk about what some of the things that aren't so great. The ride is very, very bouncy right now, and that is rough, especially on these rougher country roads. Um, the other thing that's uh, rough is the steering. It is very sloppy, and that is absolutely. Ugh, see it bouncing around here. It's not. It's a little get get a little rough after hours of this. Um, the steering is sloppy, so it's a lot of fight with the steering, and even like trying to hold it with my knee right now. I can hold it relatively well in this straightaway, but not that great. It, it, it unfortunately wants to move around, and it's a slippery steering wheel. So the steering wheel can use a good leather cover. Um, the other thing up here is I need obviously mounts for Garmin. I need voltage meters for uh, the two different battery systems or electrical systems. Uh, I need a phone mount. Uh, I need an outside temperature sensor. Uh, I could really use some kind of a, probably oil pressure, oil temperature, water temperature, a uh, few other specifics for the, for the engine uh, monitoring. I could also use air pressure uh, and temperature sensors somewhere up here. Um, obviously a better stereo. Eventually I'm going to need some switches for lights and things like that, whether they go on the dash here or they go up here to this area, uh, or even somewhere up here, that would be better even. 
um, to have it up here, closer up here in the dash instead of up high and shorter wiring. Um, obviously you need to change the seats, have a little bit of interior storage for food and drink. Yeah, and I'm gonna, and here I am driving in my brand new, my brand new truck. That's right, it's literally brand new. I have 527.5 miles on the odometer right now. It's a little bit bouncy without any camper on the back. It's a little bit noisy because there's no sound insulation, no sound deadening, anything like that. You know, those things will get resolved as the camper gets added on, which will happen over the next month or two. Pass-through gets cut in and the camper starts getting built out. It's gonna be really exciting. It's gonna be really exciting. It's been a a two-year project in the planning. Finally, uh, to, to, to another phase of this project, and that is actually having a vehicle. <laughs> it's a starting point. You know, by no means is it the perfect vehicle, but, it, but it's very good. It's gonna do the job of what I want it to do very well. So I'm excited for that. I've tested it out on a little bit of a trail. It's gonna be very capable technically very capable on technical trails challenging trails it's probably going to be pretty decent on the road pretty good on the road and i don't know i think it's probably a pretty good overall compromise um, of drivability road drivability off-road drivability payload capacity all uh, size not too big i'm excited i'm excited to uh, share this project with you guys and uh, as I build this out, um, I got a lot of things to do on the chassis to start with. Uh, I'm going to add a compressed air system that'll be capable of refilling the tires very quickly. Uh, that means at least one tank, probably a second tank, and a 24 volt air compressor with a, that's a 100% duty cycle that a, has a good throughput. I've got an air conditioning condenser that's gonna go get mounted in between the frame rails. And then of course I have some, at least a gray water tank that's gonna get mounted in there as well. And I gotta figure out between the subframe and the chassis rail frames and the space that's there, how much space I have for a gray water tank there. At least that's my hope and my plan. We'll see how that plays out. And anything else I can really fit between the chassis rails that would be nice to fit there before I put the camper box on it. I'm excited to get the camper box mounted and then I have to cut a big hole in this brand new, really expensive new vehicle. A uh, big hole in the back of this cab here to do the pass-through. Um, that right now, I have a pass-through frame back there on the frame rails with the spare tire. And so I'll be able to uh, get that going in earnest here pretty soon. Uh, but obviously a lot of little steps to do uh, before jumping into that. Anyways, I'm excited, I'm excited. It's finally happening. It's gonna be a big project. It's gonna be a really big project, but it's happening. So I'm excited to share with you. Let me know your questions, and I will definitely share more. Um, um, I'm gonna provide a lot more details about why I chose this chassis and the other chassis I looked at. I'm gonna provide some more details about what I think makes this a good chassis compared to other chassis. And like I said, not that it's perfect in any way, but it's it's good. What I plan on doing to the chassis, like things to dress it up, some driving lights or extra lights, off-road lights, improving the, the seats inside here, adding a nice center console that can hold some food and uh, beverages uh, for while driving, um, improving the dash here so that I can hold uh, GPS, have a good stereo in it, uh, have some gauges uh, such as like outside air temperature voltages for the two different electrical systems, uh, probably some parameters for the actual uh, vehicle itself, things like coolant temp, oil pressure, temp and, pre uh, and pressure, obviously a phone mount. So those are, those are some of the things, a little more insulation here in the cab to quiet it down. Uh, and, and also insulate a little bit better from uh, the outside temperature, which doesn't really seemingly need that, but anyways, I'll add some of that, some nice little map lights or something like that, some place to store maps and things as well. And obviously a little bit of a nice way to, to pass through uh, between the front to the rear, uh, make that a little more comfortable as well. So those are some things I'm gonna work on and I'm excited to work on all that and get this thing really pretty well 
kitted out for some longer road trips and really comfortable driving experiences and travel experiences and camping experiences with the new camper that I'm really excited about. I think that's just going to tremendously improve the camping experience, particularly in really cold or hot climates and having a lot more water to be able to travel really into you know a lot more remote regions and stay longer and all that. So I'm excited to share all those things with you as this build out goes. Again, let me know your questions. Please do subscribe, share this with others, keep the stoke up for me uh, by doing that. Yeah, and I appreciate uh, you watching and look forward to sharing more. That is an unencumbered dash view right there. So the Fuso is now at home and it is being built out as an expedition camper. And I am excited to share with you all these next steps of doing that and my suggestions and recommendations for you and any help that I can provide with your build out so you're doing. Look forward to sharing. Please subscribe.